The gentleman yields. Um, just uh, for the record, uh, this, this hearing is not being done in isolation. It has been carefully uh, uh, coordinated with the House Armed Services Committee and uh, not only has their blessing, but a bipartisan blessing to, uh, to hold this hearing. Um, also, uh, uh, without objection, I'd like to submit for the record uh, Secretary Miller's uh, transcribed interview under oath uh, to the Select Committee on January 6th. Um, two excerpts. So, Mr. Miller, did you try to read? Well, let me back up. On January 3rd, did you have, or even prior, did you have all the authorities needed in terms of activating, deploying the D.C. National Guard? Um, and he said, yes, I felt I did. Did you need any additional authorities, or was there a discussion about your authorities in any way at the January 3rd meeting? No, I didn't. I felt like I had all the authorities I needed and did not need to discuss anything with the president regarding authorities. Another question. So, Mr. Miller, did you try to reach President Trump that day? I did not. Why not? I had all the authorities I needed to perform my duties, responsibilities that day, and didn't need any other guidance from the president. I now recognize uh, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Griffith, for five minutes for an opening statement. And let me start, Mr. Chairman, by submitting for the record the Army timeline of events from December 31st, uh, 2020 through January 7, 2021. That report dated January 7, 2021. Without objection. I find the, some of the comments this morning interesting. Uh, because I too was on the floor that day and I find it interesting because there's an allegation that the commander-in-chief has to call everybody who's in the chain of command to make sure his orders are followed. It is my understanding and I believe that the evidence today will show from these gentlemen who have given their time and are whistleblowers, meaning they're coming forward with something that other people may not want to have heard, that we will discover through their testimony that in fact uh, the president had given the instruction, perhaps un misunderstood on January 3rd, but certainly on January 6th, uh, prior to that instruction being relayed by his officers in accordance with the general military procedure to the DC National Guard. And uh, that's a big part of what this hearing will be about today. Uh, and I think it's important that we keep that in mind. Further, we've heard a lot about the attempts to uh, rewrite history because the January 6th committee is allegedly supposed to have already done all of this. But we will hear, I believe, from these gentlemen today that they were not talked to by the January 6th commission. And further, that commission will forever in history be tainted because it was the first time in history in an attempt to write the history after the fact that both sides, both major parties in this political situation that we find, have found ourselves in for the last 175, 200 years, both were not in, invited to participate in an equal manner. That the Republican representatives who were supposed to be on that, who was originally set up, were supposed to be a part of the January 6th committee, were not allowed to be present. They were not allowed to cross-examine witnesses. They were not allowed to ask for witnesses like these four brave gentlemen who are here with us today. They weren't allowed to call those witnesses to appear in front of the January 6th committee. So while the January 6th committee may have found some very interesting information, they intentionally chose not to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, at the very best, it can be described as a partial attempt to put forward facts that favored their side of the narrative and not to get to all the facts. And as Jack Webb and his famous character from Dragnet used to say, the facts. We just want the facts, ma'am. That's what we're here to do today, is to try to make sure that we're getting to the facts, not the political rhetoric, not the emotions per se, but the facts from four brave gentlemen who serve our nation and have served our nation, who have come forward. I don't know any of these gentlemen. I don't believe any of them has a political ax to grind. They are here just to deliver the facts. I yield back. The gentleman yields. Without objection.